It takes a certain breed of stock market investor, the kind with lots of money and lots of guts, to thrive in queasy times like these when the market keeps losing altitude. Carl Icahn is one of that breed. He has a knack for turning someone else's loss into profit for himself. But he can also help others improve their bottom line through the so-called Icon Lift, an upward bounce that often happens when he starts buying a beleaguered stock. When we first broadcast our story on Icon last March, the subprime mortgage crisis and recession fears were just beginning to take a toll on the markets. With the Dow Jones down more than 10% this year, most investors are tearing their hair out. But not Icon, with his habit of pouncing when everyone else is losing their shirts. The day we visited Icon Enterprises, the stock market was swinging wildly, at one point dropping 300 points. So has this been a bad day? This is not a great day? Tough day, tough day. Wow, this is beautiful. Look at your view. Icon works in a skyscraper suite overlooking New York's Central Park. I think I lost today. You did? Yeah. yeah. Actually, he lost big, well over $150 million that one afternoon. But when we spoke with him a few days later, Icon told me no big deal. He lives by the mogul's credo, never let him see you sweat. I was buying it that day. I, I mean, seriously, I was very happy about that. You looked like you were... I'm not, I'm not, Frazzled not, and well, I'm always were... frazzled. I mean, I mean, I, I look good now. I comb my hair, but but I'm always got so much going on, and I enjoy that. One of his biggest holdings, Motorola, plunged 19 percent that day, but Icon, the ultimate risk taker, was gobbling up more shares in the company. Motorola is a perfect example of how Carl Icahn operates. First, he chooses a company he thinks is poorly run and trading below value. Two years ago, he started buying up millions of shares of Motorola. Now he controls over a billion dollars worth of stock. As he usually does, he's been making demands in order to jolt up the sagging stock price. First one, dump the CEO. That happened in December. Then break up the company. His goal is always the same, to reap a hefty profit for himself. He's been successful, say Wall Streeters, because he's intimidating and relentless. Is it because you just have so much money? Well, and they know my nature. It's, it's, they know What's I'm not nature? going away. That I'm not going away. That I'm an obsessive guy, that I'm coming in here, I've done it, and there's no way that I'm leaving until they do something. That's eminently refinanceable. That's He's not been hunting down That's vulnerable corporate prey cold. since the 1980s, when he was reviled as a black hat corporate raider. Why does everybody say that you're the man everybody loves to hate? Love to hate? Well, you're hurting my feelings. That's, That's me interviewing him in 1986 after he took over TWA. Carl Icahn, unfair to flight attendants. He was seen as ruthless because he fired people, slashed salaries, cut roots. The management of TWA, it's true, should have done this a long time ago. And as the company went into bankruptcy, siphoned off money for himself. I own it. It's my money. I worry about the bottom line because if I lose, you know, I'm answerable to my bank account. Back then, when Icon targeted a company, management would often pay him so-called green mail just to go away. But that kind of shakedown isn't tolerated anymore. Ladies and gentlemen, Carl Icahn. Today, he's called an activist because when he targets a company and makes money, so do the other shareholders, the Icon Lift. The last year, year and a half, the stocks that we became activists in, their values went up $55 billion. Fortune magazine says he may be making more money for shareholders than anyone else on the planet. <laughs> His most recent success came when software giant Oracle bought its competitor, BEA Systems. I just figured it out. Icon, a major stockholder in BEA, coerced Oracle into raising its bid. How much did you make? About 300 million. <laughs> <laughs> but I took a risk. That I mean, did not I took a happen. risk. But hey, well, how about the other shareholders? All the shareholders made, if you, if you add up what they made, they, 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 you're talking 2 billion, 3 billion, the shareholders made. Thank you. Now, all of a sudden, he's Robin Hood, making money for the little guy. The managements of our companies. For the and crusading for ways to make American companies more competitive. He says we're losing our edge because U.S. corporations are bloated with heavy bureaucracies and rampant waste. There are very few companies. I couldn't go into it. I'm not a manager. 
and knock off 30 percent of costs. Just costs of waste. Just waste. Now, why is that a problem? Because that's why one of the problems in our competing, this is a specter coming because we can't compete with Asia and we still walk around with our head in the sand. It's a sad commentary. He gets really worked up over fat CEO paychecks and bonuses even when the company loses money. They give him all this money for doing a terrible job. And, and, and it, from my way of looking at it, why? You do seem to have special contempt for CEOs as a c category, as a group. We're going to be run by morons, right? Okay. I have no contempt for them. They're, well, you don't they, have, they have responsibilities. You call them morons. What do you no, mean you no, don't you know, contempt for that, them? That is unfair. You, do you have... I have a metaphor that, that the guy that gets in to the, 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 in, in the company, he moves up the ladder. He's, he's like the fraternity president in college. He's the guy that you like. He's always there when you need a buddy. He doesn't make waves. You never know when. You can't ever figure out when he's studying because he's always at the, at the eating club or the fraternity when you go over there. <laughs> and that's the guy that moves up the ladder in the corporate world. You really think that's who becomes the CEO? In many cases, absolutely. Now, are there great CEOs? Yes. I mean, I want to make it clear. There are a lot of exceptions. And the boards don't care. He what says too to often boards, boards of directors don't, don't hold management's so. feet to the fire. So other investors often call on him to step in. Hey, I get calls all the day from smart guys, hedge funds and all, come call, why don't you look at this one? I'm sort of the guy in school that the other guy goes to and says, why don't you beat that guy up, you know? So, <laughs> he loves a good fight, no doubt about it. I'm looking as I'm walking along here. All your paintings are battle paintings. Many a CEO has passed these bloody scenes of a warrior vanquishing his enemies as they head to a meeting with Icon. Does it tell me just, something uh, about you is what I'm trying to figure not out? Not really. Sends a, sends a slight message to people who come. With the sword in the hand. <laughs> yeah. Even as a kid, his mother said he was like Genghis Khan. He was an only child growing up during the Depression in Far Rockaway, part of Queens, New York. My father said, son, look, you have no talent. Really? I said, well, thanks, Dad. Thanks for making me feel good about that. Clearly, Mr. Icon didn't get his son, who was smart and ambitious. Carl got into Princeton and paid for half his tuition with his winnings at the poker table. I was always very good. If you call it, I don't, I don't know if you call it talent or whatever, I was always good at making money. Was he ever? He's now the 24th richest man in the United States, said to be worth $14 billion. Do you live a glamorous life? I'd say no. Absolutely not. <laughs> He's married to Gail Golden, his second wife and former assistant. How you doing? Because he is such a workaholic, Gail says they have little time to enjoy the money he's made. Do you have a yacht? Yeah, we have a yacht, but we don't use it much. You don't have a lot of houses? Yeah, we do, but we don't go. <laughs> Does she have anything she wants? She takes it. She doesn't <laughs> ask me, you know? I, I have no idea what she buys. What she, but why do you saying? care? Well, you know, I just don't, I, I wouldn't like somebody just frittering away money. I mean, it still means something but you to me. Have I'm a kid it. from Far Rockaway. I still would not. You have $14 billion, and she wants well, to go. Well, you say I got $14 billion. I never said <laughs> it. <laughs> so, how do they spend their money? More and more on philanthropy, like building this track and field stadium for the school children of New York City. Raise your hand and building two charter schools in poor neighborhoods in the Bronx. These are overseen by Icon's foundations, which Gail runs. She works in the office, and so does his son. Is this my son? 28-year-old Brett, an analyst at the Icon firm, plays chess with his dad on the weekends for money, of course. And recently, Brett began winning. Beat the hell out of me. I tell him how you beat the hell no, out of me. No, no, no. And he's, you've been working he's too on good. It. He's too good. He just says that because he wants to get odds. Yeah. That's bull. He beats me. I heard that you went out and hired somebody to teach you to play better uh, so I you did. can beat well, him I, again. I, know. I got a grandmaster. <laughs> Icon, along with his son and 40 other analysts and lawyers in the firm, work long hours looking for more companies to target. And these guys do a great job. Somebody left. I don't know who that is. I'll Let's find out. That name. They also work on Icon's $8 billion hedge fund. To get into it, investors have to pony up a minimum of $25 million. Keep working. That's good. After the fund had been averaging gains of 30% a year, it slid to just 7% last year. Has anybody questioned whether, since you didn't do so well last year, whether you're losing it? 
losing the touch? Nobody calls me. They don't call me. I don't know. <laughs> can we read anything, though, into just 7 percent? Some years you're going to make 70 percent. Some years you're going to make 7 percent. You should always do better than the market, and you shouldn't lose. But, but he doesn't always win at everything. He actually lost a big one recently when he moved against the multimedia mammoth Time Warner, growling that the stock price had barely budged since the merger with AOL. It's four years later. Has Dick Parsons done anything? No. He wanted the respected CEO, Richard Parsons, replaced, along with all the other directors, and the company split into four parts. Icon didn't get his way. It was David versus Goliath, and Goliath won. There are people who say that you got in over your head, Time Warner, that you didn't understand that business. It's a little bit of he who laughs last. I mean, well, you know, maybe I made a mistake, but I made $300 million on it. So is that so bad? <laughs> okay, I mean, you know, so I guess I was wrong. Well, he was wrong in the shareholders' eyes. They backed the CEO Parsons, who had argued that Icon didn't care about the quality of the company's movies or magazines or its people. Well, did you, you know, care about I, the products of the people? I do care about the people. I do care about it. But I care about it in a macro way because I see our country going off a cliff, okay? And I feel bad about it. I'm, I'm asking you this because one of the big raps against you is that what Carl Icahn wants to do is go in and get a fast, quick a profit out of the company, and he doesn't think down, down the road. Yeah, but I, I can only talk facts. In every company we've gone into that we get control, we've put millions and millions of dollars into them. It's true. Sometimes he takes over bankrupt companies, like a chain of Nevada casinos, puts millions into them, and turns them around. But more often, he buys up a stock, agitates to get the price up, the icon lift and gets out. I make money. Nothing wrong with that. That's what I want to do. That's what I'm here to do. That's what I enjoy. Today, you tell me you're a, a shareholder activist. I don't and say. I, the the name is the same. An activist is the same as a raider. You know, they call it whatever you want. A rose so you by any haven't other name. changed? I haven't changed at all. Not one iota. I'm still doing the same thing. I go in, buy a lot of stock at undervalued company. It helps the other shareholders a great deal. But I'm not putting myself a cloak and say, oh, shareholders, you know, I'm doing a great job for you. So I'm you saying, don't do it for the other shareholders. You do it for you, but it does happen to raise all the books. It helps, it, it helps the shareholders immensely. He also hopes to help shareholders with his latest move. As a big holder in stock in Yahoo, Icon was outraged when the Internet search company spurned takeover bids from Microsoft that he felt would enrich shareholders. Now he has forced his way onto the Yahoo board to keep the pressure on for a sale. But even Carl Icahn can't insulate himself entirely from the market's mood swings. Remember all that Motorola stock he bought? It continues to sink in price despite the company agreeing to changes Icahn demanded.